Reaper 5.985 is out now. Let's take a look. And before we get started, I just wanna say, if you've missed any of the videos in this series, there's going to be a playlist link down below and you can catch up on all of the Reaper updates. The first thing we're gonna look at is in the Media Explorer, deselect other media items when inserting media via action. So let's come into the Media Explorer and get some files. Let's get some WAV files here. And so I'm just going to drag and drop one in and you can see here that it's selected. And if I drag in another one, uh, the previous one becomes unselected. And if I do the action insert into project, that will deselect those other ones. And if I do insert into project on a new track, that is deselecting any of the other ones that I have selected. Which makes it much faster for going into whatever other steps you have. It used to be that all the imported media would be selected together uh, as you import. And then if you're doing any other actions, you have to first unselect just a little change that should speed things up for you. Next up is support for embedded Apple Loop tempo information when importing AIFF files. So I'm just gonna search my database for AIFF files. Then I insert one of these Apple Loops. I can put on tempo match here, double click, and that uh, syncs to my project tempo. So my project tempo was 120. This original one was 110, and we can just verify that by going to source properties and here, Apple loops, beats eight, 110 beats per minute. And so that's automatically matched my project. If I put this at bar two, you can see that it's eight beats and it goes from two to four. So I'm just gonna turn match off. And I wanna show you this other thing that came in the previous update, 5.984. So I'm gonna import this. And as you can see, it's not synced up because I had tempo match off. But there is this action. If we open up the action list and we go to um, item properties, set item rate from user supplied source media tempo slash BPM. We run this, type in the BPM of the original file, which in this case was 110. Hit return. And that's automatically snapped that to the correct length. This isn't just for loops where there are perfectly cut beginnings and ends. Um, if you have just something that was recorded at a certain tempo and it um, and maybe it's a little bit longer than a perfect loop, you can still use this action and you just need to trim off the end and it, that should do the trick. In other words, if you have something that was recorded in a project that's uh, 160 beats per minute, you import it without using any time stretching you can run this action, tell it it was 160 originally, and it'll snap it to your 120 project. It applies the correct amount of time stretch, but not necessarily trimming the item length to uh, be a perfect loop. Next, we're gonna look in the batch processor, which is under the file menu, file, batch file, item converter. And in here, there's a new checkbox for preserve source start time. And this works with broadcast wave files where there's a time code um, already embedded into that. So if you're using a field recorder, this is a very important. Anything you go from a field recorder into Reaper and do stuff through the batch processor and you wanna keep that original timestamp, that needs to be checked. Uh, this is a new thing that wasn't available. It used to actually uh, use its position in the project or, or put it at zero once writing it. So this is a cool thing for any sound designers, anyone that needs to preserve that metadata in that exported file. The next thing in the batch converter is actually something from the previous update, 5.984. Log files will warn if effects were not loaded. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. The batch file converter has an effects chain function, and it will apply that effects chain to any of the items in there. So if your batch file converter is set up with an effects chain where there's a missing effect, like uh, you update a plugin and the name changed or, or you deleted something, something like that, um, now it's gonna show an error in that case. Next up, we've got a change to mouse modifiers, add modifier to move item content while obeying snap. And so this is pretty cool. If you go into the preferences, um, editing behavior, mouse modifiers, go to media item, and left drag. I'm gonna set up 
option control to um, move contents, just move, and apply this. So first I'll show you moving item contents. That's when you hold down the option key or alt, and when you drag, it moves the item, all the audio inside of the item, but it doesn't actually change the beginning and end positions of the item, right? Because you can consider an item to be just a container for media. And um, so moving item contents, super useful thing, um, but that does not follow the snapping. So now with this new action, um, which as I showed you, setting this to just move, um, move item contents, just move. Now what's going to follow the snap setting. So snap to grid is on, I'm gonna hold my control option keys, and now it's going to move uh, within the item boundaries, but moving in quarter note increments, or if I change my grid to 16th notes, it's going to move in 16th note increments. Another really useful feature added to Reaper. In the render window, we can now specify .aiff extension for AIFF files, or MP4 or M4V for videos. Uh, so if you need a very specific file type exported, uh, where it's compatible, you can just type it into the file name. So if I go to the output format in AIFF, and um, by default, it's gonna be AIF. So we can just add uh, period AIFF, and now the extension will be changed there. If we change this output format to a video format, like uh, H.264 with the AV Foundation codec, it'll be untitled.m4v by default, but we can also type in mp4, and you'll get an mp4 file. YouTube doesn't seem to care about m4v files. Uh, it works perfectly fine, but Twitter is expecting an mp4 file, so. But I've always got around that by renaming the file in Finder. Um, it's, it's basically the same, just a different extension. So that's about it. That's all I'm gonna show in this video. There's a lot more, mostly bug fixes, mostly um, stability changes. And that's where I'm gonna end it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.